Southland Conference football starts now. With that, we send it down to our sideline reporter for tonight's game, Chris Mikoski. Hey, Chris. Hey, Doug and LD. Great to be part of the crew. Well, for both teams, this is huge when it comes to the Southland Conference race. But for Southeastern, it's easily the biggest football game since bringing back the program in 2003. On the line, a 3-0 start and probably a spot in the national rankings. That's the kind of stuff that keeps Coach Mike Lucas up nights. This is his third year leading the Lions, and tonight he has a chance to raise their prestige to an unprecedented level. But Lucas kept saying this week that McNeese is the standard for success in the Southland Conference. Matt Viator is the man in charge of keeping the Cowboys at that high level. Viator won Conference Coach of the Year in 2006 and 2007. Both were championship seasons for McNeese. Much more from down the field all night, Doug and LD. Tyler Beatty in the ball game right now. He's a transfer from Baylor, probably would be a starter at most other FCS programs. But Brian Babin held on to the job in spring practice and into the fall. But coaches are going to try to get Beatty into the game as many times as they can. Unfortunately, now in because of an injury, guys. Down to the sideline and check in with Chris. McNeese offense obviously taking advantage of the turnovers that the Southeastern offense is committing. Walking by the Southeastern bench, a lot of blank stares, a lot of bad looks on their faces right now. Brian Babin, for his part, put his head up in the sky, looked around for a little bit, then just got up, started passing the ball around with Tyler Beatty. He's ready to go back to work. Injury update with Chris Mikoski. Hey guys, for the better part of that last drive, Southeastern trainers were looking at Jasper Duck Ducksworth, specifically his left ankle. He's been walking on it a little bit gingerly for the last couple of minutes, but he has now grabbed his helmet, gone to the sidelines, appears to be ready to go back in as soon as the Lions get the ball back. Let's send it down to the sideline and check in with Chris. Well, D talked about it, but Derek Faru just looking like a leader out there, never loses his composure. The Cowboys wanted one more score right before the half, and he did everything in his power to make it happen, including the run at the end. Really likes to put the ball on the ground. Dual threat quarterback, guys, and we're seeing it tonight. Coach Vietor, obviously you hate to give up that touchdown right before the half. Must do a lot for momentum on that side and hurt you guys going into the locker room. Yeah, it does, and they get the uh, kickoff to start the second half. But, uh, you know, we're up 10 points and uh, against a good football team that's 2-0 in our conference. So, uh, you know, we're, we're happy to be up. And other than that, obviously your defense forcing turnovers, your offense has been capitalizing tonight. Yeah, our defense, I think, is playing really good. Of course, they got a good offense. I mean, they're going to make plays, and uh, we know they're going to make plays, but uh, I think our defense has done a good job so far. Thank you, Coach. Back to Doug. Welcome back to Toyota Southland Conference game of the week and the Toyota halftime report. Three other games going on around the Southland Conference. It's the Capital One Bank race to the finish. First, the battle of the Piney Woods earlier today in Nacogdoches. This rivalry moves to Houston and Reliant Stadium next season. But this year at the home field of SFA, the Lumberjacks roll 42 to three. SFA now in a six game winning streak. They're three and zero in the SLC. In Conway, it's halftime. Central Arkansas leading Nickel State 35 to six. And up in Northwest Louisiana, it's Northwestern State and Texas State in the first quarter. It's Northwestern zero. Texas State zero. Doug and LD, before I send it back up to you, have an update on injuries on the southeastern side. Three men will not be back in the second half. Merrick Lano, Simi Yarborough, and Cole Wardell. All of them out with sprained ankles in the second half. They won't be back. Doug, initial reports from the southeastern medical staff had Simi Yarborough not coming back in the second half, there was no question about that. Then five minutes later, Yarborough trots out of the locker room. He's testing that sprained ankle. He will try to go. This is Toyota Southland Conference game of the week. Southeastern taking the lead 28-24 over McNeese. LD, you asked what was said in the locker room. I asked around a little bit. They said it was very calm, no yelling and screaming. Everybody very much together just talking about what needs to be done in the second half. Let's send it down to the sideline and check in with Chris. Well, Doug, I know conflicting reports, but they're all coming out of the same mouth. The uh, medical staff for Southeastern at first saying Yarborough would not come back in the second half. Then he came back, but now he is officially done. He's on the bench and getting his ankle iced up. As far as the rest of the Southeastern receiving core, they have a lot of big play weapons. 
five home run threats that Matt Viator said he was worried about earlier in the week, and they're spreading it around, guys. Chris, down on the sideline, what do you have? Well, guys, Champlain Babin and Javaris Murray, of course, only freshmen, but in the week leading up to this game, Mike Lucas didn't know if he was going to see Todd Pedlin, but he said, frankly, it doesn't matter. They have two great running backs behind Pedlin and Murray, obviously causing them fits tonight. Babin, somebody that Mike Lucas would have loved to have on his team, recruited him hard, but ultimately McNeese won out. Doug here with Coach Viator and Coach Henderson State, Appalachian State. You get a few weeks off, but these close games got to be hazardous to your health. Well, no doubt it is, but I can't say enough about the effort of our players. I mean, to hang in there and things weren't necessarily going our way. And I can't say enough about Southeastern's players. What a great game. I mean, two teams, I thought, you know, kind of went back and forth. We kind of dominated early, and then they dominated, you know, pretty much the middle right there. And then we, you know, we made some plays at the end. A great game. The way your guys just dug in, obviously, Southeastern got some of the momentum back by scoring late in the second quarter. 21 unanswered then, but your guys answered. Some lesser ball clubs wouldn't. I think so, and I mean, you know, Southeastern would have. I mean, they did it a couple weeks ago at Texas State. They were down and came back, so, uh, you know, I just can't say enough about our players. Uh, we hung in there. We made some stops on defense, and, uh, you know, we finally put together some drives on offense. Coach Matt Viator of the victorious McNeese Cowboys, guys.